Shavua Tov. Hope everyone had a nice Shabbos. We're continuing learning the Sil Sharm, the Path of the Just, and we're starting chapter 16. So if you're just joining now, this is a great time to start, beginning of a new chapter. We use the Art Scroll edition, and we are on page 307. So we're learning about the Mida of Tara, which is spiritual purity. Now, when we talk about some of these Midos, some of these levels that are in the later sections of Mesil Shasharm, there most of them are beyond what we are, where most of us are on our spiritual journey. These are very lofty, high levels of spirituality that us average folks have not yet attained. So the question is, why do we bother even learning it? So Rav Matasial Solomon, in his edition of Mesil Shasharm, addresses this point. He says there's several beneficial reasons for learning these uh, attributes, specifically about Tahara. He says one reason is is that it's important to know what our spiritual goals are. It's important to know what levels we could reach if we really strive for perfection, if we strive for growth, to know that there are higher and higher levels and higher planes of spirituality that we can reach. And it's important that we know that those high levels are out there. And in addition, when we know that there are higher levels out there than what we are, it should have a humbling impact on us. If any of us would have the, you know, uh, have the temptation to be haughty because, oh, look, we're so religious, we perform all the mitzvahs. Well, no, we shouldn't be haughty at all because we're not holding even by the highest uh, spiritual levels. So that's another reason. And then the third reason is, is that even though we might not be at the level to achieve tahara, spiritual purity, in its entirety, we might be able to achieve it in certain areas of our life and when it comes to certain mitzvahs. And we're going to explain what tahara is and how we can attain it. And even though we might not be able to achieve it in every area of our life right now, but it's important to know that there is such a level so that we can shoot for it. And also, even though we might not be able to attain this level in every area of our life, we might be able to achieve it in certain mitzvos, in certain small areas. So let's start. Chapter 16. Hatara hi tikun halev v'hamachshavos. Tahara, spiritual purity, means the rectification of the heart and the thoughts. We find that King David used this language. Shamar, he said, Hashem, create for me a pure heart. And it means that a person shouldn't have any of his actions influenced by his Yetzirah, by his evil inclination, but rather all of his actions should be directed with wisdom and his fear of God and not have any bit of sin or lust mixed into them. And we're going we're to explain more, the Ramchal is going to explain more what this means. That means even in physical, and act, physical actions that we do, such as eating and whatnot, after we already achieve the Mida of Precious, that Precious or, or abstinence from things which are allowed is the previous attribute that we discussed. That's when a person only takes from the physical world what is absolutely necessary for him. So that means we're at this level after precious. So after a person already only takes from this physical world what he needs to sustain himself, that means he doesn't eat extra, he doesn't do engage in extra areas of physicality, he only does what is what is necessary for his sustenance so that his goals in life should be spiritual. Now we're talking about a level above that, that even in those areas where he is only taking from the physical world that which he needs to sustain himself, but his thoughts and his emotions are totally pure that when he engages in those physical activities, the only reason he's doing it is to serve Hashem, and he's not doing it for personal enjoyment at all. Now, as I mentioned, this is a very, very high level, and we're not expected to just be here overnight, but it's important for us to know that such a level exists, that there is such a thing to strive for. And we're going to learn how this actually applies to mitzvos also, and it'll be, there are certain levels when we perform mitzvos that we really could apply it to, and more uh, more practically. Okay, Indian Shamra Barabi Eliezer, like we 
like it says by Rabbi Eliezer, Shahayim Megala Tefach Umachaset Fachayim, he would reveal a tefach, or reveal a small amount, and he would cover twice that amount. When he was in, engaged in certain physical activities, it was like a demon was forcing him. He didn't want to engage in the physical. He didn't get any personal enjoyment from, from it. He only did it. These actions, for instance, having relations, not because of any personal enjoyment in, the, in that act, because it's a mitzvah to have children. It's a mitzvah that one should be with his wife, but not for any personal uh, physical gratification. Now again, again, very, very high level. On this, King Solomon said, In all of your ways I will know you. And he straightens your path. Now he says, up until now, the Ramchal has discussed having Tara in our physical actions that we do. That means after a person only takes from the physical world what the bare minimum of what he needs to survive, that at that point, his thoughts are only that I'm doing this to serve Hashem. Now, again, to do this all the time is very difficult, and I would venture to say, not to put anyone down, but I would venture to say that probably most of us are not on this level. But where we could do it is that once in a while, if you have a, just even have a thought when you're eating, you know, eating breakfast, saying, I'm eating breakfast now so that I, c- I can have strength to serve Hashem, I can have strength to study Torah, I can have strength to work to support my family. And if you have that thought, the Ramchal writes in Darach Hashem, that actually sanctifies your physical act of eating and makes it into a mitzvah. So while we might not be able to extricate the physical pleasures of eating, right? We're all going to enjoy our toast or our golden grams when we eat it in the morning, but we could have that additional thought that when we're eating, we're also doing it for a spiritual purpose. Now, that's when it comes to physical pleasures. Now, the Ramchal goes on to say that this doesn't only apply by do, when we're doing physical actions, but it also applies to mitzvahs, that there's an element of tahara that is desired when we perform the mitzvahs themselves. Now, how does this apply? Let's see. Now, this is the topic of Shalolishma that's talked about many times by the sages. There are many types of Shalolishma. So, what does Shalolishma mean? When a person does a mitzvah, he can have various intents when he does the mitzvah. The, is his intent to, I'm, let's, let's take uh, putting on tefillin, for example. When a person puts on tefillin, why does he do it? Does he put on tefillin because he says, God wants me to do this, so I'm going to do it now? Or does he put on tefillin to say, you know what? I'm putting on tefillin because God told me and I'll get a reward. And I want the reward. Or he sa- maybe he says, I put on tefillin in front of people because I want people to think that I'm a really holy guy. There's a lot of intents, intent that a person can have when he's doing a mitzvah. And our job as Jews is to try to have the most pure intent possible when we do the mitzvahs. And that's how tahara, spiritual purity, applies when fulfilling the commandments. And we're, now we're going to talk about the different types of intent, of kavanos, that a person can have doing mitzvahs. Haramikulam, the worst of these, who that he doesn't do mitzvahs to serve Hashem at all. He does it to trick people or he does it to gain honor or money. He wants people to think that he's a holy man, a holy guy. You know, unfortunately, you have some charlatans that they appear to be holy people, and then they extort money from them to get blessings from people in vulnerable situations. It's very, very sad. If anyone's interested, I'll send them an article about certain people. And these are fakers, right? They're doing mitzvos. They're technically fulfilling the commandments, but they have horrible intense intent when they do it. And this is what it says, On people like this, it says it's, it's better that they, um, when they were born, their afterbirth would go on their face, meaning it's a, a way of saying it's better people like that never, never would have been born. On them, the prophet says, We become as someone who is impure, and all of our righteousness are like a repugnant garment. Now, there's a different type of shalolishma, 
of bad intent. You do mitzvos because you want to get reward, right? It's not a pure intent, but it's also not so bad. And on that it says, Now, before we say that, what does lishma mean? Lishma means I'm doing the mitzvah because God commanded me. That's why. The pure, pure intent. Hashem command told me to do this, and therefore I'm doing it. That's the most pure intent. So we had three we had three levels so far. The worst level was that somebody who does mitzvahs just to look good in front of people, to get money or honor. Level two is that someone does mitzvahs to get reward. And level three, the best level, or level one, the best level is that you serve Hashem to get, uh, because that's what Hashem told you to do. You're listening to God's commandment. Now, even if we don't have the pure motives, there's a famous Gemara that the Ramchal quotes here from Psachem, that, right, we might think, you know, well, I'm not doing the mitzvah for the best reason. I don't have pure intent. It's better that I don't do the mitzvah. You know, Hashem doesn't want my uh, my half-baked mitzvahs. You know, I, I, I can't, I, I just, I'm, not, I'm honest with myself. Um, I'm being realistic that when I put on tefillin, I'm doing it to get reward. I'm not doing it because Hashem told me, you know, I just think Hashem's going to punish me or I want reward. Whatever it is, I think it'll help my life. So I put on tefillin, it helps me relax, whatever it is. Um, so we might think, better not to do the mitzvah. Says the Gemara, that's incorrect. Totally wrong way of looking at it. The Gemara says that it's better that a person should always do mitzvahs, even for the wrong reason, which means in order to accept reward, because eventually he'll start doing it for the right reason. So that means when we do, what's the right way to do a mitzvah, even if we don't have the proper intent? The right way to do a mitzvah is, is that I know I'm doing it because I want to get reward from Hashem, but in the back of your mind, you say, you know, if I keep doing it like this, eventually I'm going to be doing it for a pure motive just to serve Hashem. So again, it's this idea that we have, even though we're not at the level now, we don't stop doing mitzvahs, but we have the goal in our mind that eventually I'm going to be at a level where I could do it to uh, for pure motives just because Hashem told me to. Now the, the Tosfus in uh, Bracho seems a little different than the Ramchal here. Here the Ramchal says it's a very bad thing to do mitzvahs for honor. But the Tosos and Brachos seems to say that if a person does mitzvos or and learns Torah for honor, that's shalol lishma. But it's not as it's not the lowest level. It's just the mid level. So even if one does mitzvos for honor, that's also included in this gemara that you should still do the mitzvos for honor because eventually you'll do it for the right reasons. Ah, the, the Ramchal concludes this paragraph. Ah, al kapana mishalo higia daim etoch shalol lishma el lishma hori rachuk min hu mishle muso. But someone who's still not doing it for lishma is still not at the proper, is still uh, distant from having perfect service of Hashem. So perfect service of Hashem is that a person does mitzvos with the only reason to, because that's what God told me, period. Or he eats and engages in other physical pleasures because only that's what God wants him to do so that he should sustain himself and he doesn't have any physical pleasures. Now again, these are very, very. There's a very high level to uh, spirituality for someone to achieve, but we have to have in mind that there is such a high level out there, and that even though now we're doing things for the wrong reasons, that we know that this is the goal, and maybe one day we'll uh, we'll get here. But it takes years of, of work and you know little little um, baby steps. You know, it could be that there's one mitzvah that we really connect with, and and that mitzvah maybe we could do it lishma. Or even if, um, but other mitzvahs we can't. Or even when studying Torah, you know, I think, uh, you know, my uh, Rebbe mentioned once that, um, you know, most time people learn Torah, Shalom Lishma. They don't learn it for the, you know, the what's, what's Lishma? What's learning Torah for the right reason? That's your learning Torah because you want to know the mind of God, what God wants from us. So even if you're learning for the wrong reasons, many people do. You know, it's, it's uh, most people learn Shalom Lishma often. So it's impossible that you don't have a little mixed in of lishma too, you know. For the, for a few minutes when you learn Torah, you probably wanted you know just to know what Hashem what Hashem wants from you, and it's worth it to learn shalol lishma all that time. You know, besides that, shalol lishma is a, is a huge mitzvah. But because during that time of learning, even if you had the wrong intent, eventually you know you'll have a few minutes in there where you had pure intent. So even if you're not doing an entire mitzvah. For the right reason, it could be when you're doing the mitzvah, for a few moments, you do have that proper intent. Okay, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to email me or message me or any comments, and I wish everyone a happy, healthy, successful week.